consistency matters a lot. When you're consistent, it helps you to develop personally. So it has helped me. I go to school sometimes two weeks. I will spend uh, like two weeks at school. I won't even come home because I'll be like, I'm the head boy. And if I graduate, I don't come up with good results. What are people going to think of me? So that idea or that statement keeps lingering in my mind. So it helped me to stay on track, to make sure what I, I do what is necessary to be able to uh, get to the position where I actually get to. Interesting. Design, why young um good morning dear viewers uh welcome to fine tv gambia and of course to another interesting i mean episode of our special interview and today um with me here is no other person than um, lamin kamara i mean the head boy of my senior secondary school i mean class of 2024 so Lamin, I mean, uh, is one of the best, I mean, graduating students as per uh, Mahat Senior Secondary School class of 2024 is concerned. Lamin uh, nailed solid nine credits, I mean, in his humanities field uh, in the 2024 WAS examination. So as a media platform, we deem it necessary to have Lamin uh, on our platform to discuss uh, some of his accomplishments and, of course, his educational journey. So, Lamin, it is a pleasure to have you on Fine TV. Yeah, thank you so much, Ibrahim Mumbai. Uh, I must confess uh, more profoundly that I'm deeply honored uh, having been uh, one of those who is fortunate to be your interviewee uh, on this edition of your presentation. Interesting. And then that is, I mean, a signal. Thus, I mean, nothing would be easy in this interview. Lamin is somebody who is, <laughs> I mean, who has, I mean, uh, oratory skills. And then when he speaks, you listen. So Lamin, not to wait, uh, waste more time, who is Lamin Kamara? So um, there is nothing really much about Lamin Kamara, um, precise the fact that my name is uh, Lamin Kamara. Uh, I was born and bred in the northern side or the northern region of the country, uh, that is the North Bank region uh, of the Gambia, uh, in a place called Albreda, right? The famous Albreda, you know, it is in fact known because of uh, the slave trade, it has been known uh, across cultures or across uh, the history of the Gambia in relationship with uh, other European nations who came to Africa and explored the Africa. So that was the village where I was actually born and bred. So I actually have two roots, right? Uh, my great grandparent uh, is from a place called Sika. So Sika is also located in, in Nyomi, right? Uh, so we went to Fonyi, that is my second route. Uh, he went to Fonyi, right, and later proceed to Kasamas to memorize the Quran. So after having memorized the Quran, uh, he came back to Fonyi and they gave him uh, a plot of land, right, and he built a madrasa. So the madrasa is primarily meant to teach students or to teach uh, his students uh, in the Quran, what the Quran says and what the Sunnah says of the Prophet and all of those things. So the place, uh, it's like a forest. So in Bandinga, you call it like Sudo. So 
the name of the village is Sutsinjang, right? So the name Sutsinjang is derived from that word like Sudo. So the Sudo there, they had to go and clear everything. So it is named like Sutsinjang, right? So he became the Imam. So that is one Jola who later came because for him, he was not passionate the Bible when it comes to being an Alkalo or things that are related to that, right? So he asked the Jola man to be the Alkalo and he is going to assume the position of being uh, the spiritual leader uh, uh, of, the, of the village, right? So uh, that is where my grandfather was born and that is where my father too was actually born. And my mother is born to a village called uh, Kasany uh, in, in, in Fonyi. But I wasn't born there. I wasn't born in Fonyi. I was born in, in Alberta. And it is my aunt who actually uh, brought me up. Interesting. So, Lamin, I mean, has two rules, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, in the southern part, and of course, uh, at the northern part. Northern part exactly. So, Lamin, after I mean, hearing that <coughs> I mean, uh, biography or a synopsis of who Lamin Kamara is, we would love you to take us through your academic journey. Who is Lamin? Where are those Lamin starts? Or where, did, where did Lamin start? So, Lamin is. Uh, a student who spent many years, I would say, in, in academics. Uh, I started my nursery school. In fact, I did, I did nursery school twice. So at first, I was at Albreda called Pat Van Gogh Nursery School. Right? I started from nursery one, nursery two, to nursery three. But at the end of the day, I was unable to, to bring the resource that my aunt would desire me to have. As a result of that, he had to take me out, out from that school and take me to Jufre, to Jufre Nursery School. So the name of the nursery school is Roots Nursery School. So there I start scratch. I started first. first. I started uh, nursery one, I continued to nursery two and nursery three. So in 2011, that is when I was enrolled at Alberta Lower Basic School where I, where I did my grade one. So I continued, then 2016, I finished my uh, primary school in Alberta Lower Basic School. Then I proceed to Ajafatu Bojang Upper and Senior Secondary School, Alberta. So I was there till 2019. I graduated as well from grade nine. Uh, I will later come to my academic, um, you know, qualifications and all of that strength, right? So in 2019, after I graduated, I also I didn't graduate with a good results. I was promising enough. So that is how I continued to decompose because in our family it is a norm. Right after your completion of grade nine, you go to the campus and pursue your uh, secondary education. Right, so that is how I continued, and in fact, it is like uh, on top of my result, it is written there, please enroll, and that is as a result because I could not get the marks that I would wanted to have. But there are reasons that actually co uh, culminate to that. I will talk about it when I'm discussing some of my challenges that I faced. So I continued to grade twelve. Uh, in 2000, uh, 2022, uh, but uh, but then I was unable to do the exam because of what is in order, order, which is a challenge which I would buttress on later on. So I had to transfer from Mindo Senior Secondary School and go to Mahat Senior Secondary School where I start grade 11, right, in two, uh, 2002 to 2003. So I, this is how I continued to uh, grade 12. Right, and Alhamdulillah, now I have graduated with it, like solid nine credits, as you made mention at the, the beginning. Right, so this is my academic journey from mm -hmm. nursery school to uh, grade oh, 12. Interesting. So it's like in a nursery, Lamin spent six years uh, at nursery school, nursery one, two, three, nursery it, one, two, three. Exactly. But also, I went to school very early. I think I was like three to four years. I was in up to five years. I went to school very, very early. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, what was the impact? Though you are very young, I yeah. mean, uh, after leaving, I mean, uh, Alberta, then nursery school, and then going to, uh, uh, to Gifre, after your graduation uh, from nursery school, I mean, what are some of the impacts that I mean, see? Yeah, in fact, one of the complaints that my aunt lodged was, you know, Alberta is a tourist center. So, as a nursery school, or as a nursery school student, right, uh, my aunt claimed that, you know, uh, what we do most of the times is we do well, welcome, you know? We welcome the tubabs, so they give us sweets and all of those things. So usually our concentration would not be on what we are learning, but our concentration is diverted to what is going to, what are we going to have when these tubabs comes? Her reason was valid and genuine. So that is the reason I had to go from Alberta, Pat Van Gogh School in Alberta, 
to root nozzle school in, 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 in Jufri. Interesting. Then yeah. your Andy is very wise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, love him to move on. Um, you've highlighted key that you face challenges, I mean, uh, from upper basic school and to senior school. So now, like, um, you'd like us to take us through, I mean, the challenges that Lamin encountered, I mean, uh, at school level, and then um, from, from Alfreda uh, coming up. So growing as a child, or growing as a primary school student, I was never a good student. I would say I was never a bright student. Uh, my grading system was poor, and later on, I said to myself, I need to make efforts to make sure I improve these grades. From grade one, grade two, going to the uh, mid of grade three, my results was very poor. It goes 30, 40, right? Position like 40, 30, 20 something. That is where I would be like going around, in and out. But my third term, going to grade four, from the 30 to 40, I from the 30s to the 40s, I graduated from that to like seventh position. And when my grade three teacher, you know, it's a primary school, so they would read your point, your, your, what you score, right? First, this person got first, second, third, so it continues like that. So he mentioned Lamin Kawara, seventh position. I stood on the table because I never thought I was going to have that. Right? But before that, I put in effort. Right? I make sure my grade, it has, it, it let it, let it transform. Let it go from, uh, from that to a point where it's going to make my aunt to be proud. Maybe he's, he's not going to take me <laughs> to another school. primary school again. <laughs> <laughs> right? So that is how, uh, in fact, I stood on the table because it was a clarion call for celebration. I never had that before. So that is where, my zeal and enthusiasm when it comes to academics, that is why it stemmed. Well, started. Yes. So I started grade four. I went to grade five. I was getting my third position. I was getting fourth position. Right. But also going to grade seven, I got like seven position. Right. So I was like more or less going, going back and forth. When I went to grade seven, my first term, I got fourth position. So from second term, third term, I got third third. I continue to grade eight. My first term, I got third term. I got third position. Second term, I got third position. But third term, that is where crisis begins. Grade eight, third term. Yeah, grade eight, third term. That is where crisis begins. At that moment, uh, I don't know what, what what was happening, right? But it's just an idea that kicked in that I need to stop. Uh, English academics and go to chronic memorization. In fact, at some point, almost by grade nine, I wasn't I wasn't even going to school. Right, I would go to the madrasa. I would not I would not go to school because my mind is completely disconnected from it. I'm into something else. I don't want to continue with English language. Right, I was not studying. I wasn't going to school. My aunt would talk here and there, but because at that moment, my mind is 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 into something else. So I was not with me, with me, or I wasn't with myself. So I would definitely needed help. But even with that, grade nine exam comes. I, I got like aggregate thirty three. That was the results I got. So my aunt wasn't happy because I had that because um, she wouldn't want me to have those types of results. She would want me to be always at the pinnacle, at the pinnacle of the hierarchy of things, right? But that was the reality. I have to accept the reality as it is. So as I continued to the combos, I started my grade 10 in Mindo Senior Secondary School, right? Uh, that is where I met you, I guess. Certainly. Right. But the first person that I talked to when I, uh, when I newly, I mean, uh, arrived at Mindo that early morning. In fact, it was very funny. I think we became friends because of back were exactly the same, <laughs> right? So suddenly, yes, yeah, so, sim we are, we have similar backs. Similar backs, suddenly, yeah. yeah. So we 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 um at grade ten, uh, that is where I started to get connected to when it comes to public speaking. 
growing as a student from primary school to junior school, I was, I was, I was an introvert. I wasn't an extrovert. I'd always want to side away. I wouldn't want to associate because I find it very difficult to talk in front of people. Right? When it's more than five, I cannot. I cannot talk because there is an animal inside me that suppresses any time I want to talk in front of the public. But then our literature teacher, Mr. Collins, gave me or gave us uh, an assignment, and the assignment is going to be a presentation, right? So the assignment, uh, I was like, when I when I came to the class, because I knew when I came to combo, I was like, these people are smart people, and on my results when I was coming, they write there, please enroll. And this is combo. There are students who have very good credits, very good uh, results. Okay. I'm from from the village, born and bred there. Maybe I'm not. Be, I will not be smarter than them. But that was just a voice. Right? That is lingering in my mind. But I say to myself, they are human beings. If they can do well, I can equally do well. Certainly. So that is how I went and started making the research. The school has a computer, a computer library, computer lab. So that is where I went to start to make research on how you even... I was not even concentrating on the content of the presentation. Because already I had this notion, anytime I want to talk to people, I cannot. So what is more important for me is to be able to uh, kill that animal that resides in me whenever I want to talk. So I went and started looking videos which actually buttress on how you make a presentation, how you start it. And having understood all that, everybody presented it. We were the last presenters. In fact, I was the last presenter mm -hmm. within our, uh, in our group. So when I went, because already I had an idea on how you're going to present. So the start of my presentation was strong, solid, and sizzling as the rest of it. That was the day one of the students called me Grammarian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because I was using name, like... That name, that name. Yeah, it, it went viral. Yeah, right? So, so uh, that is how it, it actually, I was able to kill that animal that resided in me. Right? So I then continued to grade 11. So when I continued to grade 11, uh, we were approached by our teacher, government teacher, Mr. Ba. I think you know him, right? Yuka. Yuka, yes. So he said, we're supposed to debate with the great tense. You remember that debate? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> but then he said the debating style is going to be British parliamentary debating. It is tricky. It is a mind-boggling academic activity. Right? Certainly. So I was like, Mr. Ba, I don't think I can do this. Because he said, you have to make research 15 minutes Before. and then present your argument in seven, in seven strong, solid minutes. I was like, I cannot, like, I cannot do that. I underestimated myself mm -hmm. that my brain wouldn't be able to cope with the situation. But later on, I have to make myself understand, like people who can do it, where do they start it from? Where were they able to gather that courage to be able to do what is required? Mm -hmm. Then I realized it all depends on commitment and perseverance. Then I I launch my studies, my research, and when it comes to BP debating. At some, some of the times, I would sleep like 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. just because it was the first time I, I didn't have any idea. So I need to make research on what British parliamentary debate system or style entails. Right? Having understood seven things, I didn't master it. Right? That is how I went. And we debated. And luckily we won. In fact, I was the first speaker. I was I was the prime minister. <laughs> Suddenly, it was an interesting debate, right? Yeah, it was an interesting <laughs> debate. Yeah. But also, uh, even before that, my uh, spirit and enthusiasm when it comes to debate started when I read the story about the story of Socrates and Critamulus. Maybe you must have heard it before. So Socrates is one of the most ugliest men ever recorded in human history right i'm saying one of right uh but also he is one of the greatest debaters ever recorded in human history 
So when I read this story, I pondered over it, I ran through it. I said to myself, if somebody can debate like this, I think I can also do that. So he debated with Critabellus. Political science students would know this, right? He debated with Critabellus, knowing that Critabellus is one of the handsome men to ever live in Greece at the time. So the topic of the debate was, it's very funny, right? And it may be <laughs> useless if someone would say it. Yeah. Like, the topic of the debate was, which one of them is more handsome than the other? Knowing that Socrates is one of the most ugliest men ever recorded in human history. Right? He had an eye that bulged out. In fact, some believe that if he looks at you, you tend to be scared because of the, the looks. Like for him, he does not crave for what you and I crave, for like nice clothes, shoes, and you just have one rope, wear it, and it's done. So they mounted the podium. He asked Critabulus a question, right? Mm -hmm. Are there one type of beauty or one kind of beauty, or are there different kinds of beauty? Critabulus respond, the handsome man respond, that there is a beauty in a sword and there is a beauty in a horse. A sword huh? and a horse. So Socrates told him, if these two things are different and both are beautiful, how are you going to determine which one of them is more beautiful than the other? Then he said to Critabulus, I challenge you that my eyes, as bulging out as they are, are more beautiful than yours. Why? Because I can see in front, I can see sideways, even adjacent things. End of debate. Think about it. He is the ugliest man. Critabulus is the most handsome, and he defeated him in debate. The point is, debate promotes critical thinking. It allows an individual to be able to give solution to problems at a very high speed compared to an average person who probably is not debate oriented. It's going to find it very difficult to uh, be able to make right decisions mm -hmm. in a very short span of time. In fact, that, that style is called the Socratic method, where you use the point of your, of your opponent and use it against him. As they would say, like uh, we have what is called reductio ad absurdum. That is the reduction of an argument to a ridiculous proposal and criticizing the result. So I was like uh, intrigued by the fact that how could a man do this? If a man can do this, we are created by the same God. Also yeah. Our IQ might, might be different, right? It could be fast when it comes to making decisions and winning arguments. My, maybe mine would not be to his level. But mine, yours can even be faster than his. Yeah, just okay. presuming, right? If he can do that, I'll, be, I'll also be able to do that. So that is where I started to love debate. So I continued from Mindau and go to Mahad. Uh, before going to Mahad, mm -hmm. uh, because I was at the beginning, at my grade 9, going to grade 10, I was struck with these issues. So from grade, at grade 12, in fact, I studied with you. We spent a week, a week yeah, to exam. This, yeah, the nights together to, to study. A week to exam. Was it three days or a week? Just some, some days. Yeah, because some I came days. back. So sometimes it's difficult for me to explain, but I just have to say it out. Three days to the exam, a voice kicked in that I shouldn't do the exam. And when I said to you and other people, to my parents and to my housemates, they couldn't even believe me because they thought it's a joke. But I, was, I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't with myself. So the day of the exam, I was asked to go to school to do the exam. I could not. So they had to force me to go to school. I went to the school. There is no way I can I can I can do the exam because already my mind is 
is in, the, in it is in that situation. Nothing can change it. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I was taken to the principal's office. Mm -hmm. The principal tried to talk to me to see or trying to find out where the problem lies. He could not. So all my mind was telling me, just go home, go home, go home. So I went home. I didn't do the exam. So I went to my parents, to the village. I was there for a while. So they thought I was okay. They brought me back. That I need to take the exam again. Again, I went to the school. I couldn't do the exam. Mm -hmm. In fact, the vice principal, the then vice principal, uh, no, he see, see, he's a principal now. That is Madam Conjurer. In fact, they suggested if the examiners can bring the, the question papers out, you can do the exam outside. But this voice is there's no way you can do it, and I didn't do it. And still date, I cannot understand what that it is, what that is. But Alhamdulillah, now I am fine. So after that, I went to Mahat Senior Secondary School. So when I went there, started my grade, started grade eleven. So. Because I was, I was more or less being graduating from not a good student to a good student. So when I went to Mahad, uh, like in the class, like those people, they are smart people, or smart people in our class. Mm -hmm. But most of the times, when issues are raised, the approach that I take to answer the questions, is different from how they do it so maybe they could be amazed by that right which actually resulted to me being elected as a head boy because uh, I didn't even start grade 10 there in fact I came grade 11 it wasn't the beginning of uh, 11. grade 11 almost two to three weeks have gone so that was this time I started going to school so a few weeks later uh, they had they're supposed to have a debate, but I was unknown. But how was I be able to discover it from the rest? You know, I was doing public speaking course at the University of the Gambia, right? Uh, it's a mentorship program, but the mentorship is uh, conducted at the UTG, called the uh, the Journey yeah, Mentorship yeah. Academy, <laughs> right? So already I have knowledge when it comes to. Uh, presentation when it comes to uh, critical thinking so I was more or less above them right so we went to the debate uh, at Gunju like 10 senior secondary schools met there and it was it was like a cal proper system so I was like I'm going to win this imagine somebody doing BP system is going to do cal proper I said to myself I'm going to win right so when I went in fact, the way I presented my argument was distinct from the rest. Because I already have knowledge when it comes to BB dividend system. Right? So luckily we, we won. So that is how the cycle continues. Interesting. I mean, a uh, great academic uh, achievement for sort of, and of course, quite challenging lemon phase. I mean, so if I could say your transition usually, becomes a problem yeah uh, transition was. from you know grade eight going to uh, nine uh, eight going to nine was a problem 11 going to 12 was a problem mm -hmm. but I, I i thank god now everything yeah, I mean, right, has been yeah. settled yeah. so let I me mean, now we will delve into your i mean your academic achievements now um from albreda if you go take a synopsis from albreda uh, i know yes. i know the huge part is at mars <laughs> exactly so but i'm talking about <laughs> albreda yeah so uh at, 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 at albreda from no, um, genius, um, primary school to junior school, uh, as I said, I was never a good student. I was just an average student, right? So most of the times when there had to be, let's say, academic activities, usually I'm not, I'm not included, right? Because maybe I didn't have the mind and scared as well. That animal keeps ringing my hand, saying, you cannot do this, Lamin. So... I, I, I don't think I have achieved a lot of things there, right? But uh, 
the, uh, how I, uh, then I continued to the senior secondary school in Combos. I think most of my achievements range uh, start from in the, in the Combos and not in the pro provinces. Right. So, so what, one of my achievements was the first achievement. Uh, first academic achievement when it comes to ex uh, curricular activities, when it comes to debate, was the debate that held between the 11th and the 10th, and where I was asked as a prime minister, a first time debating, uh, we, we actually won. Uh, and the second victory was uh, on the 10th of August, 2022, uh, at Gunjur, where the 10 senior secondary schools met. I was also able to win that debate with my head girl, so we won it. Uh, and the third one was uh, at the Gamia College. Uh, there's many senior secondary schools met there, right? And also we are able to win the debate. Uh, it is um, organized by the Peace Peer Ambassadors, right? They're trying to advocate for peace uh, in the country, right? So we are able to win the debate as well. So another achievement was uh, when I started doing the public speaking classes at the university, right? Uh, the mentorship right so at the end of the mentorship usually the ceo would make sure that there is a graduation and the day of the graduation there is a competition so public speaking would be there and debate also would be there so the public speaking like in fact the badge i was the only participant who is yes yeah, senior school there is a uh, university students uh, some are teachers in the college, right? But luckily, I was able to win the debate. But that debate, I won it. For me, it wasn't because I had the necessary skill to debate. It was because of the prayers of my parents. Before the debate, before the competition start, the public speaking start, I won the public speaking, not the debate. The debate, I had the best speaker. Cyber was our... Adjudicator. Adjudicator, right? So before the competition starts, five minutes before the competition starts, I went outside to grab my phone and call my aunt and talk to her that I'm going to have a competition. So to me, time at which somebody asks dua from their parents or prayer from their parents, the time matters. You can inform them that it's going to happen this day, but the day of it, for me, it was five minutes, exactly five minutes. I was monitoring it. I called him and told him, I'm going to have a debate. I'm going to have a public speaking. So he, he prayed for me. He prayed for me and said, you are going to win, except if you are not obedient to me. So he said it very clearly. You would win, except if you're not obedient to me. So to me, at that moment, I didn't know if I was obedient or not. So it, it was, the deal was, it's going to be, that's going to be determined if I won or I didn't want the debate, I didn't want the public speaking. So when I won, I said, Alhamdulillah, I was obedient. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. So those are a few of Lamin's, I mean, uh, uh, academic uh, achievements. And then uh, Mahal Lamin I mean, uh, became the head boy. Yeah. So Lamin, take us through, or oh, I mean, let's discuss. I mean, uh, on your head boy uh, ship role at Mahat. How does this? I mean, uh, came. Yeah. So being a head boy is something that that is never easy. Like being a leader in uh, in general, it's it's not easy, right? And sometimes people tend to mix leadership. When it comes to being a boss, like the difference between a leader and a boss, right? Usually, a boss would give instructions, but a leader follows. So even be even before I become a head boy, I already understand what are some of the necessary uh, skills that are required for me to become uh, a leader. So one, as a leader, you you need to be you need to have good communication skills. So before I was elected. I won two debates. I, we won two debates with the head girl, right? And because I was, I was uh, when it comes to communication, uh, I have no problem with that, right? Because I was an aspiring law student. 